Let me now take you on a tour of some actual programming code so that I can, um, I can illustrate what I've talked about abstractly before and also I can give you a, a real tangible feeling for what does computer code look like. Um, so first of all, let me define it. Computer code is lines of text, lines of text that you type in. And now remember, this is high-level computer code. Low-level computer code is derived from high-level computer code. But in general, in common parlance, computer code is lines of text that you type in that tell the computer step-by-step step what to do. And we've said before that they consist of logic and calculations and that the logic is in turn consists of statements that say whether or not to do something and the conditions under not under which you'll do those things and the calculations are either mathematical or other types of manipulations that allow us to know from stuff that we know data that we know what it is we want to know from the notifications that you have what do we want to know we want to know how to lay out the screen and show you those different notifications from the posts that all your friends have done on Facebook we know that what do we want to know? We want to know how to create your news feed and give you all the different posts in the right order. Okay, so let's look at this illustration. Um, and we're going to imagine that the illustration that I'm calling Basic Basic, um, it's called Basic Basic because um, I, uh, I did this example in Visual Basic. Visual Basic is useful for this because it uses language pretty close to normal parlance. Other computer, la other computer um, languages uh, use more abstract symbols to, do, to denote things, but BASIC generally uses words that you'll recognize, like IF and FOR EACH and those sorts of words. So, um, let's look at this illustration that I call BASIC BASIC. It's a BASIC program written in BASIC, in, in what's called Visual BASIC, um, and we're going to look at it line by line to try and unpack what it does. Okay, so, the first thing you'll notice when you see this illustration is that it's on a set of lines. You can see the line numbers there, line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4. That's pretty much how programmers think about their code, that it's a set of lines, and I type each line, and then under this line comes this line. And when I want to find something, I often refer to the line number. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say on line 1, on line 2, on line 3. So each line of the code has a single command, or sometimes it's called an instruction. An instruction or a command to the computer to do something. And as I said, we're going to break those down into um, commands that are about calculation and commands that are about um, uh, and commands that are about logic now those two things I'm breaking I'm pulling them way apart to give it to make this clear to you but in reality com uh, logic and calculations they're all mixed up together and we do calculations in order to be logical and logic is part of calculating so I want to pull them apart just so you get a, a basic idea but understand that the real world as always is more complicated than the simple way that I'm presenting it all right well let's start on line one Line 1 says, this is a function. Now, we'll talk a lot about functions as we, go, as we go further in the course, but the idea of a function is it's something that the system does. In this case, we're talking about notifications, and this is a function that the system does. This is the notifications function. Now, this is not the real notification functions that, face, that Facebook does, but you can use it as an example to start to understand what something like notifications might actually consist of. So, it's a it's a, it's a function called notifications, and it's one function among many, many, many that you can imagine Facebook does. You can imagine there's thousands of functions that Facebook does, and that those functions all interact to create the Facebook system. So this is one function among many that, that, um, uh, that, that Facebook might have. It consists of a line on line one. It says, I am this function. I am the notification function. Okay. Um, Let's see, so line two and three are comments. Comments are very helpful because the programmer can type them in there to give themselves or other people who read their program little hints about what's going on. And so you can see in these two comments that I put in a couple of lines about what this thing does and what it's about. So the comments that in this case are uh, highlighted in green are things that are not commands to the computer. They're really notes from programmer to programmer. That's line two and three. Line four, five, seven, and eight, those are the major logic lines. So the phrases if and for each that are on those lines, they work pretty much the way that you'd imagine them working in English. The word if says, well, if something, then do something else. The word for each says, for each one that you have, for each notification, for example, do something. So that's the logic. It's, as I said before, telling the computer when to do and when not to do a particular set of commands. 
and the if says if this condition is true then do these commands the for each says for each one where these conditions are true do these commands so you can see for each might go round and round and round if there's a hundred notifications it's going to go round a hundred times it creates what's called a loop the if statement on the other hand creates what's called a branch I branch in this direction if this is true I branch in that direction if that's not true so branches and loops those are the big programming concepts those are the top level programming concepts and that's as far as really we're going to go into describing them but let me describe in terms of notifications what's happening right here so on line four it says if the number of notifications is greater than zero then go ahead and do the commands that are in five six and seven okay you get the idea if the conditions on line four are true do five six and seven line eight matches with line four so the if and the end if match together that's how we know that it's due line six seven and eight not uh, sorry si five six and seven rather than do five six seven eight nine ten because we hit an end if and when we hit the end if it says this is the end of the things that you do if that condition is true so we create little blocks that's a block of code in line five six and seven that's what you do if the if is there okay so it says this is the end of the if that line eight so line four says if the number matches if the number of notifications is greater than zero do these extra lines which extra lines the lines that are between the if and the end if okay line four says for each notification do line six do line six so we're only going to do one line and that's line six and notice that we have a line seven and the line seven matches with that line five to say this is the thing I want you to do each time so just like the if has an ending statement that says do these lines inside of this block the for each also has an ending statement that says do these lines do these commands do these instructions um, until you hit the next statement so for each and next defines a little block of things that's going to happen for every notification the if and the end if define the block that's going to happen if there are any notifications at all okay so if there are any notifications at all do this block then you're inside that block for each notification do this block and that block turns out to be just one line long and I did that for simplicity okay so line 9 matches with line 1 and it says this is the end of the function so you start to get the idea here I think that blocks of code segments of code sets of lines are an important concept in programming and we do a lot in order to distinguish which blocks of lines am I talking about now okay so line six now let's look at line six here because line six is, is actually why this entire function was written in the first place line six, six says add notifications this is the notification function its purpose is to add notifications to my notification list right so all the other lines look at all those lines we have what is it eight lines we have eight lines and their entire purpose is to decide when line six should run now line six you should understand is not a single thing I just said add notification to list as a shorthand this is that idea of high level and low level add notification to list is another function so this function here that's called notifications is really responsible for deciding when the add notification to list function should run and the add notification to list function is going to do the real work of adding the notifications to the list now I think you could probably imagine that if I was to look at the function called add notifications to list what I would see is a bunch of logic and more calculations and I might also see even more calls they're called calls to other functions that do even smaller uh, smaller uh, smaller bits of code so here's how programs work I have high-level programming languages and low-level programming languages I also have high-level functions and low-level functions the high-level functions call lower-level functions the lower-level functions call even lower-level functions until I'm at a level of a function so low that it's exactly that it's that it can't get any smaller the set of commands that I'm giving the computer in that function and a, a system an entire application is a set of those interacting high and low-level functions and that's the task of the programmer to figure out what functions I need to write in order to make this all happen and break them into different chunks different functions so that my code is as effective and efficient as possible all right so what else do I need to know about that so um, so line six is really the payload line six is what we what we started this function for is the reason for this function and on line six it says add notifications to list 
and when I do add a notification to list, another notification comes up on my, um, on my uh, notification list, let's imagine, in Facebook. And all the rest of the code is there to decide when do I run that add notifications. If there are any notifications, then for each notification, do this command, add notification to list. Okay, putting it all together, we have a function called, um, uh, called notifications. And if there are no notifications, it does nothing. Notice nothing will happen in that function if there are no notifications. However, if there are notifications, then for each notification, add it to the list.